Hey everybody, this is Miss Segovia bringing you today's discussion points solving projectile motion problems. So the first thing I ask you to do is write the equation for horizontal position as a function of time for projectile motion. That lovely, wonderful formula, since we're looking at position, we are looking at x equals, and here's a new one, v naught x. We're already familiar with v being velocity and v naught being velocity at the beginning of time, but adding the x component is representing the horizontal, the, if you're going along a graph, the bottom, the x axis of that. So v naught x time plus x naught. And we know that's the position at the beginning of time. So that is your first equation for today. Your next equation is the equation for vertical position as a function of time for projectile motion. So this is our vertical, this is our up and down position. That equation is y equals negative one half gt squared. Now we've seen this gt squared and this one half before, but we were adding a negative component because we're looking at a downward motion. So we have to show that we are a uh, down direction. V naught y, just like that x, we have a uh, y initial velocity position times time plus y naught. I love that one. Why not? <laughs> There's going to be some jokes about that in class. Better prepare yourself. Write the equation for vertical velocity as a function of time for projectile motion. So our velocity formula for vertical is Vy equals negative gt. So again, it's kind of like our acceleration. Velocity equals acceleration times time. Here we've got g for acceleration due to gravity plus our v naught y. So our initial velocity in the y direction. We'll use this one if somebody's like throwing something down or shooting something down. Most of the time v naught y will be zero if it's just being dropped. And now this one's gonna blow your mind. Now I know it says on your thing, write the equation for the horizontal range of projectile on over level ground. It's on page 64. We, we don't have that book anymore, so just kind of ignore 64. We got lazy when we copied it and we left it in, so blah, 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 scratch it out. Anyways, your formula is x equals v naught squared sine, oh my gosh, look at trigonometry is coming back. Sine to theta divided by g. And so we'll be talking about how we use that to theta. As you can guess, there's some angles involved in this stuff because we're projecting things. We're shooting them out and over. And so we've got to show that angle as a big uh, component and then identify all the symbols that you used above. So let's go back through and look at what those were. We had x. x was our final horizontal position. We have y, which is our final vertical height. Kind of think of a graph when you're looking at that one. We have V naught X, which is our horizontal, I'm just going to put H-O-R-I-Z to abbreviate that one, component. And you'll hear them say like the component of this, the component of that, that's what they're referring to, um, of initial velocity. We also use G, which of course is gravity. And then we had x naught, which is our initial horizontal position. Sorry for the handwriting. It likes to autocorrect me and then make it look worse than it looked when I first wrote it. Um, y naught <laughs> um, is initial vertical height. getting some t-shirt ideas just writing this up right now. Um, v not y sounds almost like your answer to why not. Well it's v not y. No. Um, vertical components. There's that word again. The vertical part of 
initial velocity. And we'll never use the word part, we're always going to call it component. And so you've just kind of got to get used to that physics vocabulary. Um, and then of course everybody's favorite T, time for T, time. So those are all the symbols that are used in those equations above. So let's put that symbols to use. Example one, a student throws a ball horizontally off the roof of Berkner High School, 20 meters above the ground. The ball strikes the ground 60 meters away from the base of the building. How fast did the student throw the ball using G, um, use uh, 10 meters per second squared for your gravity? So we got the cool little stick figure, 20 meters up, uh, 60 meters, and that is apparently not drawn to scale very much not drawn to scale. So let's use our guess method. Our givens for this one is x naught, our initial um, horizontal distance, and so we're starting at zero, which is what it'll be most of the time. y naught is 20 meters, because he's 20 meters up above the ground when he uh, throws the ball. And how far does he throw it? Well, that is our x value and that is 60 meters. Our y, where it hits the ground, since he's fallen all the way to the ground, our y component is zero. And so if it like landed on a shelf or something like that, then our y would be a little bit different. But since he goes all the way to the ground, it is zero. And so then we are looking for, in this one, our v not x or our v naught because how fast, how fast our velocity did that student throw the ball. And so we also know too, don't forget that gravity equals 10 meters per second squared. Very important to use those labels by the way. And our v naught y in this case was also zero because he started it from rest. So the equation that we're going to use from this, from those list of equations that we initially started with, is x equals v naught x t plus x naught. So what I recommend you do is pause the video for a second and try to work it out on your own and then push play when you're ready to actually solve it. Hey guys, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Flint because i got to go take care of a few things, so pay attention. Okay, so we actually are going to end up needing a couple of equations to end up solving this problem here. Uh, the first equation that we're going to need is already listed out on, on, the, on the screen here. Um, let me see if I can find, there we go, there's my cursor. All right, so with this equation, we say that it starts at the beginning so this goes to zero we get rid of the initial position so then we can take the equation and we're going to end up rearranging it to solve for v naught in the horizontal direction so the, the initial velocity in the horizontal direction and when we do that we get the initial velocity in the horizontal direction equals the horizontal displacement of the ball multiplied by sorry, divided by time. So the horizontal displacement divided by time. Well, we know the horizontal displacement, it is 60 meters. So we can plug that in, but we do not know the time. So we're gonna use the height to figure out how long it takes for the ball to hit the ground. So if we know the height of where the, at which the ball starts, we know that we know how long it's going to take for the ball to hit the ground, assuming constant acceleration and no air resistance. And this is a much better way to time how long it takes the ball to hit the ground than just using a stopwatch. Stopwatches have a lot of errors. You, you all have experienced the reaction time with stopwatches, and it 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 is not a very accurate way to do timing of an object. So this gives us a, m a much a, a, a time with much greater accuracy. So let's use this next formula here. Okay, the initial position of the ball as it's falling, we're going to say is zero. So this term cancels out and it starts when it, when you first drop an object, its velocity is zero. So this term cancels out. So we just usually are going to end up with using um, y equals 
1 half gt squared. Okay, so we're going to, oops, sorry, I'm going to get rid of this. Okay, so we're just going to use y equals 1 half gt squared on this. Not going to worry about positives and negatives for now. Okay, so now when we rearrange this to solve for time, we're going to get time is equal to the square root of twice the distance it falls divided by the acceleration, 9.8 here. Okay. So let's plug in some numbers to this. Twice the height, twice the distance it falls, 2 times 20 divided by the acceleration, and it says use 10 in this case. So t is equal to the square root of 40 over 10, which is the square root of 4, which is 2. So we have a time of 2 seconds. We can come back over here and plug in that time, 2 seconds. So we've got 60 divided by 2, which gives us a final answer of 30 meters per second. And there is our final answer for this problem. Okay. And you can go back through, review that. This is always tricky the first time you start looking at the, this kind of problem. Uh, just the more you do that, the more you get used to it, the better off you're going to be. It takes two equations. You've got to use um, this equation here where you've got velocity is displacement over time. And then you've got to use this equation over here, rearrange it to solve for time down here, okay, we rearrange that to solve for time, and and um, we can come to our final answer. All right, now, let's do example two. Here we've got the guess method again. We have our givens. So, a student on the zero meter line of a metric football field kicks a football at an angle of 37 degrees with an initial velocity of 25 meters per second using the acceleration of gravity is 10 meters per second. Let's find the time the football is in the air. Okay, and that is actually very similar to what we just did, but let's list out our givens first. Okay, our given. The initial position of the ball is zero. The is launched from the ground, so the initial vertical position of the ball is also zero. So the horizontal and the vertical positions of the ball are, are zero. Um, your x, the final horizontal position, we don't know. It hits the ground vertically, so its final vertical position is zero. Um, <coughs> excuse me, we know that the initial velocity in the horizontal direction is going to be equal to V naught cosine of the angle. And when we plug in numbers there, that's going to be 25 times the cosine of 37 degrees. And that gets us 20 meters per second. And then the Initial velocity in the vertical direction is equal to the initial velocity times the sine of the angle. So that would again be 25, but it is times the sine of 37 degrees now, and that gets us 10 meters per second. Sorry, 15 meters per second. And we know our acceleration which is 10 meters per second squared. Okay. 
So in order to solve for this, we are going to use the y equals one half gt squared. Okay. Plus, oops, sorry, I left off that t. Plus v naught in the y direction times t plus y naught. Okay. Now, <coughs> excuse me, this term we know is zero, so that goes away. And we know it lands back at the start, so that's also zero. So we've got zero is equal to one half gt squared plus v naught in the y direction t. All right. Now, let's move the one half gt squared over to the other side. Um, hold on one second. This is 